Don't rev. No revs. Okay. Been told <laughs> off. Hi, my name's C, and welcome to my Toyota Chaser, which I am filling up with fuel to the brim, ready for tomorrow, which is the Slammed UK show, Gravity, at the NEC, just to show you exactly how much a day at a car show these days costs. So we're going to start with a full tank, and at the end of the day, we're going to fill it up again and see how much we've used. So this total is not going to count. It's going to be at the end that it counts. So ignore that £78. Oh, let's see what happens. So the first expense is going to be the car show tickets. I don't actually know how much they are. It's the first time that Slammed UK have been at the NEC, so it's just going to be NEC prices. So let's buy the tickets so that tomorrow I can actually get in. As you can tell, it's the night before. £13. That's reasonable. I bet that's for kids. £28. Here we go. Oh good, there's an administration fee of £1.75 as well, taking the total up to £29.75. Pence. Done. So that's tickets out of the way. I mean, £30 these days is about average so I'll catch up with you tomorrow in this car for the drive up to Birmingham then parking then going in having a nice day having some food telling you the total cost it's gonna be a good show as well that's gonna be a bit of a bonus I'll see you tomorrow to the NEC and because this is an exhibition centre, parking isn't free for general punters like me. So that's going to be an additional cost. Let's see how much it is. It's £17.95. What the actual hell? Just to park here. And it's unavoidable. It's ridiculous. Barge friends. <laughs> so basically £18 on top of the basically £30 cost it's racking up already. So we're going to walk in. I think there's a shuttle bus. Which is actually free but we won't use that we'll walk because it's a bit of a car village at the moment you can see all the arrivals they've saved money by not owning a bumper and perhaps the loudest arrival so far is this Mazda RX-7 I heard it in the distance couldn't work out what it was of course it's a rotary <laughs> And whilst everyone misses the trick by walking down the path, I'm going to walk through the car parks to see what I can spot on the way to the exhibition hall. She has named her steering brace Katie. Toyo Proxy tyre riding on the Audi. And a 370Z on air ride with the widest splitter of the day so far. And so early on, we've got a sticker showcase. She likes the Corsa D. I'm going to work out my MPG at the end of the day. I think I'm going to beat the Fabio. I like the forward thinking. They've parked the Focus RS just by the Audi with Focus RS Blue on the front. Oh, wasp. No. Okay. Oh, something's been spotted. Hello, I've been spotted. That's what I've spotted. Is that an E39? Yes, it is. Wow. Absolutely deserving to be a car in the show, but it's in the car park, which is a bit scarce at the moment. Dodge Challenger just over there. This has never made so much sense. Look at this. 1 to 64 Hot Wheels car collection. Viper in the back of the Seat. It's never made so much sense. I'm going to keep quiet about my collection. It appears this part of the public car park has turned into a show. Do you reckon they have to pay the £18 for the privilege? Check this out though, look, you've got wide arches, a lot of carbon fibre all around the front, the bonnet too, spoiler on the back of it, and even a bit of a diffuser around the rear. And that's a lie. It's busy and there's a huge crowd just there. Something's going on. It's so incredibly crowded. I think there's a car reveal or something. It looks about a car sized space. It's a purple R32. We'll look at it later because there's just still too many people everywhere. So let's see what there is. I wouldn't have normally taken my chaser to this show to just park in the car park and not be on display But my Nissan was away because I picked up a BG giveaways car that you can win very shortly There's stuff in the description below about the video sponsor so you can win a whole car So that's on my drive didn't want to take that Chloe's at a festival so I couldn't take her car So uh, the chase is out so 
we're going to see the MPG of the Chaser later on. Talking of chasers, we've got the Geo by Lug Toyota Chaser. This has just been wrapped with a new girl on the side. I think she needs christening, so suggestions in the comments as to what we should name her. So I thought what I'd do is start at the other end, which is a lot less crowded by the hydraulic section. I think they're going to do dancing. That's the dance arena for the dance-off later on. Then I'm going to work my way towards the crowded section. Hopefully by then they'll be over here. Welcome to this olive green Del Sol, which is neatly tucked in for that camber. That's amazing. Felt like I should join in. Does that work? Well, I feel like we've peaked too early. Check out the colour of this 964 wide body with those golden wheels setting off beautifully. I might get sick of saying wide body, wide arch, because most cars in these halls are wider than the factory's intentions. BC Racing seem to have brought along what looks like a time attack or Pikes Peak R33. Yeah, the drifting is just uh, re-entering. Today might be the only show in which a R34 GTR is relatively ignored due to the unique builds it's parked with. That's a clue. And that's an answer. Supercharged BMW M3. Now, I wonder who's going to get the award for the most camber today. I think the MX-5 is winning so far. Maybe a little bit more than the Del Sol earlier. I think there is an entire max power section of the show, but this Corsa B has made his own little section. Well, we've got some more camber appreciation this time on the wide R33 with the deepest dishes so far. This is a Pandem body kit on the R33 GTR. Very, very rare to see. I've noticed some more camber. Here we go. E36 almost looks broken at the rear. That's another tucked wheel. This time the lip hasn't tucked. The actual wheel is tucked with two broken hearts as exhaust. So here's a car I've featured before. Calypso Red E30 with forged carbon on that rear arch. But I'm missing the main point of the car forged carbon over the entire front end and a twin turbo v8 the rose gold wheels matches the rose gold turbo there's even a further rose gold wheel sat in the driver's seat and in stark contrast next door we have a sparkly toyota rav4 and if you're not too distracted by the sparkle and the neons that have been brought back you'll notice turbo up front a rav4 build this must be the glitter section sparkly e36 next door and another pandem body kit this time on a gt Next door to a Volkswagen up, which has gone down. A slammed up. But most of the crowd are around a Supra Mark IV on air rides. And a Pistachio Fiesta with a few paint runs down the windscreen. Left-hand drives so must have come from afar. Proper stealthy car, that. And that neighbours a purple S15. Yay! And in light of recent videos of mine, the police are here. They've actually apparently seized this Celica and brought it to a show. That's what they're trying to show us that anti-social driving will not be tolerated. I like how their slogan is, is yours next? Well, in light of recent events, maybe it might be. Anyway, the police have distracted me. You can see they've pulled me to one side. They've pulled me over again. No, I'm not going to use that. So we've got the 944, which is in front of another 944. This one's come from Germany with that gorgeous livery. Classic race inspired from that of the 935s of the era and similar vehicles as well. Next door to a Red Bull livery on the RX-7. So you've got great scale with a bit of teal and then teal all around. You've got the engine bay has been painted and the neons to match. And inside, steering wheel, gear stick, handbrake, so many parts in that colour scheme. Bit of carbon fibre around as well. But moving to where more of the crowd is, we're at two more R34s, GTR and a GTT with the infinity lights. We've got a imported wide body road going endurance race car. That's at least what it looks like. The Honda NSX looks incredible. Next door to that Mini, which I think is getting a little bit overlooked. He knows. I don't think there's anything on this car that is standard. None of this would have rolled off the production line. Maybe the A pillars might be, and then the windscreen potentially. That's absolutely insane. It's got the fuel tank in the front, so we're going to guess something like a VTEC in the back. Oh no, I was very wrong. It's Saab turbo powered with twin pipes out the rear. That's incredible. Spoiler on the back as well. Again, with the teal color theme, along with some carbon fiber. That's definitely up there with my favourites. And yet, after all of that work, you still hear people saying, it's a Mr Bean car when they approach it. Mini's interior is a basic as it is. This has gone even further. It's just two carbon bucket seats. They've put a wall between them and the engine, understandably. A steering wheel, about three clocks, and a little digital display.
display. Can't work out where the indicators are. But I'm now being drawn over by a slammed Rolls Royce with Hulk in the engine bay. Wow, look at that way that changes with the grill. That's artistic. And from Rolls Royce to BMW to Volvo. This was completed by the team at Beauty Garage, who the guys responsible for all of the BG giveaways cars as well. Good to see it on display. And this Bentley has swallowed a mysterious pill and turned into a beetle. Right, it seems we've reached a new trend with Batman of fixing roof boxes to the top of cars. So this green Audi R8 has got a color match roof box on top and then a cream MX-5 with a color match roof box on top of that. And just by this 635 shark nose, we've got a twin turbo Huracan and a crowd around another Huracan. This one fitted with wide arches, although unfinished so far. So they are redesigning and reshaping the front fascia of the Huracan. They're going to give it wide arches. Haven't yet set up the fitment yet. It's not complete, hence loading written on the front. I want to check out this Nissan GTR. Most of its headlights have disappeared. That is all that is left. And if you thought you were looking at a Porsche 918 concept, you would be wrong. This is the Porsche Boxster. I haven't yet seen the front of it. Oh, it's still got the yoke headlights on it. Just a fatter bumper on it as well. Look at that. Wide body Porsche Boxster. And here is a reminder of what the rear end looks like. It seems they specialize in those egg yolk headlights generation Porsche. It's got the 996, 911 here. Again, wide body once more. And another 996 next door. Are people really buying shrink wrapped shoes at a show? And that's one way to up your expenditure as a show to invest in a pair of Adidas Air Katie prices. And yes, you may have noticed the width of the polo in the shop behind me. Widest one in the UK, maybe the widest one in the world. But welcome to the crowded hall where we started the video. We'll walk around here first, then we'll get some lunch, see how much the food is. I did actually make a packed lunch for myself to save some pennies, but I left it at home. Car show food prices have accelerated in value of recent years. There's another Bayside R34 GTR. And it seems Ferrari has started making vans. Oh, here we go, a glimpse into the future a modified Honda E wide body as well and the results of visualization dreaming building and escaping come to a Rocket Bunny 350Z in case you wondered but if you want to see oh no if you want to see cars that aren't necessarily suitable for this caliber of event you got to go down to the Zach's garage section Zach has brought the Koenigsegg Regera Lamborghini Miura Lamborghini Kunta and a Koenigsegg CCR their Jaguar D-Type and 300 SL and this is something Zach needs to do with his supercar a slammed 348 and a touring car livery on a modified Vauxhall Calibra. Sorry, I should probably call it an Opal because it is left hand drive. This is an Opal, not a Vauxhall. Doing a bit of upskirting underneath the Subaru and the same on the Subaru behind. And the slammed UK Audi R8 has just been revealed in ruby stone red. Yes, this is a shade of red according to Porsche. And I said I'd show you the purple R32. Here we go. This is the car that was revealed this morning. Driftworks are getting all the attention with their Mercy Largo as well as the 964 Turbo. Well, I think it's time to grab some food, so I'm going to see what the prices are, but luckily we got mates with free drinks and Simon Cowell's towels. Simon, how did this go about? So he borrowed my Renault Twizy. Yeah. This was wrapped round him to keep him warm, so I decided to keep it. You just nicked his towel. So that's where his balls were, yeah? Lovely. Just, 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 just there. there. I can actually smell it. You can't, yeah, you can smell it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Watermelon. 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 Yeah. Well, Let's go find some food. I think a burger and chips, maybe a can of Coke, that's standard. Let's see how much that comes to. We're outside, it seems it has rained. Burgers and chips, that's a bit better. So an original burger is £7.50, 50p for cheese, and then £4.50 for chips. That is not as cheap as chips. I mean, that's fairly reasonable compared to other shows I've seen. So you go, £12.50 for the burger and the chips. I didn't opt for a drink, but I will do later. I've just realized an error. I've just spent, what, £12.50 on some food. Tonight I'm going to McDonald's with Mark McCann to do a McNuggets eating challenge and we're meant to eat 100 McNuggets and the winner wins a car and I've just had a meal. Let's look at the Max Power Union section because we're now outdoors and there is an outdoor section of the show as well. That's what we want, extra width, LEDs and Lambo doors on the Fiesta. Look at that though, Xbox in the back of the Clio. And a candy pink 206. And here's a great visual joke. You can see that something's leaking from above exactly here. 
Porsche Boxster with the roof down, you, you can see exactly where it's leaking. And that's been moved forwards so that the interior doesn't get ruined. But now that the crowd has thinned, it's time to notice cars I hadn't spotted before, like this E36 Touring. Setup is insane there. Look, there is literally no arch gap whatsoever. I mean, there's a little bit there, but otherwise, that is incredible. But I've just realized I need to go. We need to work out how much exactly this day has cost. I've got so much to do, and I'm about to do a McNuggets eating challenge with Mark McCann. This is a busy day. I've just remembered I need to pay for parking, but I'm going to be late for this challenge. There's a queue to pay. The £18 for the privilege to park a car here. Here we go. £18 done. Receipt, please. Also, apparently, £15 gets you the Grand Slam seat, so that would be an extra cost. A cost that I didn't bother with today. Right, so here we go. Don't care about that, sorry. This means it's OK. What side of the road do I drive? Can't remember. Left. <laughs> Van, shall I give him some revs? So here we are, big entrance, windows down, yellow headlights on. I've used a quarter of a tank. Luckily, this was on my way home, so no bother. <laughs> Don't rev, no revs, okay. Been told <laughs> off. This is gonna be number one things that I regret this year. So I bought the chaser, we've got a table for 10 people to eat 100 big nuggets each, and the winner wins a car. I don't know which one, I'm hoping it's not the Urus. This is all gonna be featured on Mark's channel and it's gonna be hectic and chaotic. I was quietly confident until I found out that Mark's record is 37. I don't think I've ever eaten 20 before. I'm not gonna win. What makes it worse is we've got an audience to see us throw up. <laughs> this is it, the banquet oh arrives. <laughs> if you eat 100 chicken nuggets, you will win a so it turns out eating loads of McNuggets is not easy. I've done about 32 and I'm full. No, I'm fine. I'm not full. <laughs> this is my 50th. Behind me is a bucket of sick. <laughs> What's in my bucket of sick? And this is the car that we would have won if we'd have beaten all a McDonald's branded Corsa. We're gonna give Luke a second chance. Oh! Oh! Can I have a second so chance? We're gonna play rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> if Luke wins, he wins the car. Let's have a look at the car that could have been won. So you got McDonald's branding all over it. Oh, the fluff! Look at all the fluff. He's gonna be in for a treat. It's a good one. Oh. 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 Is that it? He wins the car. He wins! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the scoreboards. The disqualifications were from like chunders and exits. Lara didn't eat 60, I don't believe that. They all cut in half, so we couldn't count them. 70, 58, 73, I was 58. I think I did quite well. Most others were in their early 50s when they chunder. I am ruined. We need to go home, find out how much fuel I've used today, forgot about that, and work out the total cost of the day. But here we are, where we started at the fuel station with under half a tank left. It's basically two hours there, and then two hours back again, and uh, with a little bit of a detour in between. So the moment of truth to see how much this day's really cost. Fuel's at 165.9 at the moment. A little bit steep, but we shall see. I reckon we're gonna get to about 45, 50 pounds. That's 50, that's 60. <laughs> 65, wow. Oh, it's, it's an eight. I thought that was 65 on the dot. So it's a bit dark, so sorry about that, but let's work this out and finish this video. So, MPG of the Chaser, let's do that first. What do you reckon it could be? So we did 254 miles today. That's how much I did. And we used 39.23 liters of fuel. Put that into an MPG calculator, do some divisions and stuff. You come up with 29.43 mpg this chaser almost does 30 mpg 
That is mostly motorway miles, so it's not hooning. There wasn't much hooning at all, but 29.43 MPG is what the Chaser does. Now, costs of a full day at a car show. So with the fees, the ticket price we paid 29 pounds and 75 pence for gravity. As I said, it was a great show, definitely worthwhile. Then we have the NEC's own parking charges, definitely not worthwhile because they are 17 pounds and 95 pence. As I said, this is not a complaint. I love what I do and this is the price of what I do. On top of that, food came to 12 pounds Pounds fifty. That was without a drink because Zach gave me a beverage. So with a drink it would be more, but I'm not going to count that. And I'm not going to count the fifteen pound for the spectator grandstand seating because I didn't do that either. But you can see how it all racks up. So the final cost was fuel, which was sixty five pounds and eight pence. Sixty five pounds in fuel. I knew most people have normal cars like a Kia Seed. I don't have that. I couldn't use the Nissan. That would get about 35 MPG, I reckon, maybe even more on just motorways. So, all those costs come together at a grand total of £125.28. So, £128 is the cost of my day at Gravity. I started the day quite early and as you can see it's quite late now but i had a fantastic day let me know in the comments which of the cars that you saw was your favorite on my social media pages is where i post my favorites the pictures and videos bonus clips and more so i hope you enjoyed that video from slammed uk's gravity show at the nec in the chaser but for now thanks for watching